Hello everyone. This is Amani Saduddin back with another tutorial series. And in this series, we will be discussing about Flutter and Redux. How to implement Redux state management approach in your Flutter app. So to get started, before moving on to Redux, let's first understand why we need state management. What is the need of state management in the first place? So many of us like we get confused. We think that when we have stateful widget, we have state state. Then why would we need this whole concept of state management with this much of boilerplate code and you need to learn extra stuff? There are many state management approaches in Flutter, such as block provider, uh, scoped model, and Redux is among one of them. Redux is one of the most powerful state management approaches. Though it requires some boilerplate code, but once you get a grip on it, it's it's actually awesome. So let's consider, like if you consider in the most general sense what state is, then you can explain state as, you can consider it as whatever data you will need to rebuild your UI at any particular time, like any particular moment of your application, okay? So if this data is needed by a single widget, then you actually don't need to worry about state management. Your stateful widget is enough because you will need the state only locally. But consider this case that when your data is needed by like some widgets or most of the widgets, so in the widget hierarchy, you need to pass on the data. So in that case, as your application size grows, scales up, it becomes hard to manage data. You know, we like we need a proper way to access data from different parts of the application. So sometimes what we do is pass data through the widgets, you know, with constructors and all, or sometimes we take it store it globally but there are chances for the global data to become garbage value and then when you pass data when you keep passing on data you know data might get mutated somewhere um, in this so it is very inefficient that's why we have state management approaches and fortunately we are going to look at the most powerful one that is redux okay so now that we know why we need state management let's see why redux these are the three fundamental principles of Redux. One is single source of truth. That means the global state of your application is stored as an object in a single place. You know, we have a store and we will store the app state in the store. Then we have state is read only. That is the only way you can change the state is by dispatching an action to the reducer. An action is an object which describes what has to happen. Okay then reduces the third principle changes are made with pure functions so uh, reducers are the pure functions they specify how your or like state has to be transformed they take in two parameters the previous state and an action and then give you a new action based on those the like new state based on the previous state and the action all right now let's look at the redux architecture design all at once so see here we have this store uh, the central part the global state we store we keep it in this store okay whenever anything in the store gets updated like gets changed then the view will be updated and um, from the view if we if any event dispatches an action they trigger an action the action like uh, dispatches the event to the reducer but in between we have middleware because like if you have any asynchronous calls if you want to make any network calls api calls and all we will need another thing called middleware uh, but that is another topic so like we we, can, we need redux thunk for that so we will be discussing about that later now coming to our reducer so the reducer takes in this action and the previous state and then you know it updates your state and passes it on to the store so now the store is updated, the view will get rebuilt and the cycle goes on. That is basically the Redux architecture. 